Alberta in Canada has pulled its bid to host the 2030 Commonwealth Games because the costs are too high, possibly as much as $2 billion. Now, last month, the Australian state of Victoria pulled out of hosting the 2026 Commonwealth Games for much the same reason. So quite a crisis for a very long-standing event. And it does prompt the question, is hosting it worthwhile? Well, we can get a very informed view on that now from Preet Gower-Gill, MP for Birmingham Edgbaston in the UK. And I say that she's got an informed view because Birmingham actually hosted the most recent games in 2022 hosting the events in Birmingham was one of my highlights in my life, having nations coming together from across the world, of course, celebrating sports inclusion. I think it showcased Birmingham at its best because Birmingham is a Commonwealth city. Our vibrancy, our diversity really speaks for itself. And so holding this game was really very valuable to see so many people, A, excited that Birmingham was going to be put on the map because 1.5 billion people who never knew anything about Birmingham suddenly got to realise just actually how diverse and how how much the city has got to offer. So absolutely, I think, look, we used existing venues. The costing was clearly a, an issue of concern. Of course, nobody wants to see spiralling costs, especially during the cost of living crisis. And, and I think actually how this was managed between central government and Birmingham City Council shows how you can deliver a game which brings value because, of course, there has been lots of tourism and lots of economic benefits following that. But primarily, this is about how do we make sure that we are bringing sport to places, especially in parts of my concern constituency that would have never been able to come and attend certain sports and actually seeing women as well being celebrated during these games was phenomenal. I mean no doubt there's all the benefits you say and I think Alberta and Victoria would agree with all of that it's just that they can't afford it so when you say that there was a mix of central government and local government involvement was that in the financing? Yes, absolutely. And I think, look, that there has been claims that some of the costs, especially in Australia, for example, are being somewhat exaggerated. Of course, we used purpose-built venues, existing venues that we already had. This wasn't about creating new venues. Whilst there has been some investment, especially in terms of swimming baths, this was about actually what do we have that we can use to keep the costs at a minimum. So you've really got to work with the Commonwealth Games team and local councils and and national to actually identify how you keep costs to a minimum. Do you think there's a case, given that you know, we're talking about 26 and, and 2030 facing these problems, do you, do you think there's a case for a permanent hosting? I mean, maybe Birmingham should do it every time. I think this is a broader conversation that needs to be had with Commonwealth countries and the Secretariat. But I think what I would definitely say, you know, we've attracted a lot of tourism and business investment. I think there's been some research suggesting that actually the Commonwealth Games generated probably a net profit of 100 million to Birmingham. And the government itself commissioned a study as well this year, and it found that the event actually contributed around 870 million to the UK economy, 453.7 million in the West Midlands alone. And of course, we've had 141.2 million visitors. The benefits are huge. But of course, what this requires is for governments, for local councils, for the Commonwealth Games to actually work to deliver games that is affordable and something that's going to be sustainable going forward. But of course, there are huge amounts of benefits of how we bring people together, especially from our diverse nations, around support and celebrate our values and our shared solidarity that we have. It's great to hear your enthusiasm for it. But there are people in Birmingham who say it didn't work for them and that they're not so happy as you are with what happened and its legacy. Look, I think there are lessons to be learned. This was done at a very difficult time. We have the COVID pandemic, so I can truly appreciate the challenges for the Commonwealth Games Committee, for the City Council and the government in terms of making sure we delivered on time, we had the infrastructure in place. So no one is saying, you know, that this was easy. And of course, there will be lots of communities that think we can do things differently. I think it's really about learning and building on that. And that's exactly what the Commonwealth Games tries to do, is take the lessons from the previous city and its people and find what it can do differently. And that was uh, Preet Gower-Gill, Member of Parliament, for Birmingham in the UK.